Hi, how's it going guys? Today we're going to be playing a Shadow Isles deck. This Shadow Isles deck is going to be consisting primarily of Kalista, Hecarim, and Thresh. And we're playing against this dude who is playing uh, Ezreal and Heimerdinger. So I'm kind of blessed right now that I'm able to play Legends of Runeterra before pretty much the majority of people. Uh, it's officially out in a, in a couple of weeks to everybody. Um, but me and a select few are still able to play against and with each other. And uh, I'm using this time to experiment as much as possible with different decks, different champions, different synergies, and everything else in between. So uh, this deck, I'm again using a Shadow Isles deck, a Shadow Isles heavy deck, um, with the, the premise of playing a lot of Ephemeral cards. And with that in mind, it means that I'm going to be able to uh, get Kalista, Thresh, and, and Hecarim kind of just pumped up into their, their second state and just hopefully snowball uh, early to mid-game. So again, Ephemeral cards are cards which pretty much you can play. And after that round, they're instantly dead. But with that in mind, they're usually very, very strong. So maybe uh, they're going to be nearly twice as strong as a, an equivalent of what it would be if it wasn't an Ephemeral card. So you'll start seeing once they start getting the, the ball rolling with some uh, Ephemeral cards on, on the ground or from Shadow Isles cards in the ground, you'll start to see uh, a strong, a strong um, attack heavy uh, field. So with this in mind, again, he has uh, Heimer and Ez as, as his main deck. He's playing against Shadow Isles. He's playing a very similar deck to me, only his is going to be probably more spell heavy, I'm thinking. Hmm. So right now, again, one thing I like about uh, Shadow Shadow Isle cards is that a lot of them are fearsome. All right, so fearsome, if you guys don't know, I'm going to try and be as educational as possible in my early Legends of Runeterra videos because it's going to be very, very new and fresh to some people. So fearsome pretty much means that it cannot be blocked by uh, a champion who has less than three attack. All right, simple. It's literally as simple as that. So right now, if I was to play this card, to so attack somebody on his field, he physically can't attack it. So therefore I'm going to be attacking his nexus or he's going to have to use a spell card to nullify my damage or get rid of him in some shape or form. So that's that's the way Fearsome works. And uh, again, if you guys have any questions about my, my deck, about anything which goes on in the video, comment below. I'm going to reply to every single comment. Um, it can be as stupid or as in-depth and unique as possible. So I, I want you guys to comment. I want you guys to like. And if you guys do enjoy the uh, Legends of Rune Tower content, which I'm going to be bringing to you on a really, really regular basis, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on. But regardless, we've, we've dropped Kalista. Kalista binds to whoever um, you want. It's already on the field. So we played Kalista. We bind her to our 2-4, turn it into a 4-4. Four, four. Again, if that um, champion dies, we'll, we will be able to bring it back. Uh, because of police to have a bond with that champion. The champion's going to come back into your hand, which is really, really, really strong um, when played correctly. So, one thing you don't want to do is ever play Kalista on the field by herself because she does bind. Uh, he, he's using a really strong card early game to get rid of Kalista. All right. Um, yeah, so what you have to realize is that um, Kalista is really, really strong when combined with another champion. You want to always play her after there's at least one champion on the field, even if it's a 1 1. So, uh, he's probably going to block my 1 1 with his 2 2. He won't be able to touch my 2 4 because, again, it is fearsome, guys. So, not bad. Okay, so right now he has, uh, he has an advantage because he has a, a champion on, extra champion on the field, or an extra, not extra champion, an extra follower, an extra card on the field, and an extra card in his hand. So, um, oh, he dropped the Heimer. Oh, uh, dude, we need to get rid of him. We need to get rid of Heimer. One thing you don't want uh, to allow is anybody who runs a Heimer deck. I feel like I am one of the best players with Heimerdinger on League, on League of Legends and uh, in Legends of Runeterra. His deck's going to be primarily spell heavy. So once he starts pumping out spells, you want to um, be really, really wary of the snowball effect a Heimerdinger can have on the field. With this in mind, Heimerdinger has three health, so he is very, very susceptible to just getting removed so there we go deal deal three deal three damage to an enemy that was summoned this round i'm reading i'm sorry dude but you're gone you're gone dude so again he's a he's a one three champion i feel like he needs to be i think he needs to be a one four make him a one four or a two four and increase his cost by one i don't know i feel like he's he's quite expensive for what he is so yeah that was pretty good we got two four two three in the field fearsome is rocking 
Commander Ligros, by the way, is one of, in my eyes, the strongest champions in one of the strongest cards in the game. That is not a champion. And the reason being is Commander Lidros, or Ledros, he instantly halves the Nexus. So if your Nexus is, if, if I use it right now, or in a couple of rounds, and I don't attack his Nexus until then, it's going to get instantly nuked to 9. If you use it again, it's going to get, going to get instantly nuked to 4. It's, it's insane. All right, he used his Mystic Shot to get rid of my Kalista. All right. You usually find a lot of champion cards are instantly nullified, which are maybe weaker champion cards, uh, by spells. People usually invest a lot, of, a lot of mana into spells just to clear the field of champions, so. All right. Good. He has not played a single card, which is worth... Or which has three par. No oh, there we go. Never mind. So he'll be able to block my 2-4 my next round with his 4-4. Four, four. So we'll have to be wary of that because his 4-4 four, four is still going to stay alive. Um, do we just... Do we just kind of... Hmm, grab my supported ally plus two. I think I might just end the turn and carry over three mana. Yeah. So not this round. But next, we will be able to play our Commander Ledros, which is going to be huge. Answers. I have them. Um, we just want to keep clearing Heimer off the field, because if he has more Mystic Shots in there, it's going to be free damage, free turrets. And the thing is, I personally feel like Heimerdinger works really, really well, because you don't really attack early game with his with his um, his turrets, because you're going to get a lot of 1-1s, a lot of 2-1s. I literally I just keep them in the front line to block and I just kind of try and wait the game out as long as possible. So I'm getting those like six cost spells, seven cost spells. And I can start getting some really, really big damage down because the spells cost a lot. And I can get a um, really, really hefty uh, turrets down as well. So once you play a deck, you understand the premise of it and the logistics of it. It allows you to counter it because you kind of know what the other champion's going to do. So um, this should be good. We got 2 4, 2 1, 4 3, four, or 4 3, 2 2, and 2 4 are all fearsome, so they can only be blocked by his 4 4. So if we throw all in. Alright, we need to be really wary of what we're blocking with this time. We're going to clear the field with his. his 1 1s. I might let his 4 4 go through. Hmm. I might let his 4 4 go through, or I might block with my 4 3. Hmm. Regardless, I'm going to be hopefully on the winning end of this trade in regards to still having a lot of champions on the field, completely dependent on what he has in his hand. He might have something really, really spicy in his hand. My T4 is going to go down to... Yeah, this is probably the best way to play this. Alright, perfect. Next round we're going to be playing Commander Ledros, guys. Commander Ledros, or Ledros, whatever the hell you want to call it, is, is disgusting. I feel like he is... He, he's just as strong as a champion. Being able to take out... And the thing is, when he dies, you get him back into your hand. So... You can really get a snowball effect late game. So if I play him, he gets killed. I play him again, he gets killed. And every time the Nexus is getting halved more and more and more and more. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. He's going to go instantly down to 8 here, which is going to be huge. I think. Unless he nullifies it in some shape or form. And kill, killing the champion, even when it's been played, does not nullify the spell, by the way. So if, you know, if he instantly kills my 8-6... Doesn't matter. It's two separate entities. The spell and the card being played are, are completely different. Deal one damage to everybody. File Maw. It's going to file Maw my 2 one, my 2 2. My 2 2 is going to instantly die because. So my 2 1 is going to die this round. My 2 2 is going to die. My 3 1 is going to die. My 2 3 is going to be 2 2. My 8 6 is going to be 8 5. Hmm. It's going to leave him in a pretty, pretty good position. Because I don't have any, any follower cards in my hand.
So let's do one. Alright. Alright. Well, this is gonna be good. Dude, he healed up to 20. And now my commander Ledros is gonna take him to 10. I probably shouldn't have made my, my mist a, fi uh, a thermal 5 3. Oh no, I can attack with him this round. This is perfect. Okay. So he, he's going to only be able to block with a 4 and a 5 for my fearsome units. So he's probably going to kill my 8 5 with his 5 1. But I'm going to get him back onto my hand, which is kind of what I want. So I can play him again next round and reduce his nexus to. Oh, we know he's going to go down to how much damage is he going to take here? Five, six, seven. He's going to go down to eight. <gasps> oh my god. This is going to be big, Brian. He's down to two. If I use my flask. If I use my flask, I'm going to bring it down to one. And then if I if I play Commander Ledros, if it... If... If I play my Commander Ledros, and he has one health, does it not do anything? Or does it instantly do one damage? Because you can't half one. Guys, am I going to just play this card and instantly win? Energy signatures of your archaeological instrument, indescribable. Uh, huh? I want to see if this, if this works. This is going to be insane. Wait, I, I, think it, I think it works. What's he doing? Dude, he's at once, even if he kills me at six, it doesn't matter the spell's emotion. Commander Lidros, make sure you're using it in your Shadow Isles deck. So freaking good. Oh. I can hear your laughter coming waves across the shore. Oh, maybe you could fly my kite, babe. Maybe you could fly my kite, babe. I can hear your laughter coming waves.